the enduring enchantment of Ifugao province isn't just reflected in its timeless rice terraces, it is also seen in the heart and soul of the Ifugao woman. And we're here to celebrate with them. I'm Cory Quirino and this is Thumbs Up. Ifugao, formerly a part of the old mountain province, is a landlocked area located in a mountainous region characterized by rugged terrain, river valleys, and massive forests. It is blessed with idyllic scenery, and its main attraction is the majestic Banawe Rice Terraces, also fondly dubbed as the eighth wonder of the world. These 2,000-year-old terraces were carved into the mountains without the aid of machinery to provide level steps where natives could plant rice. In 1995, they were declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Ifugaos are one of the different tribes that inhabited this ancient territory. Their culture and tradition is very unique and striking, and its greatest asset is its people, led by no less than its governor, Dennis Habawel. This is your first term as governor. Yes. And I'm sure you have a lot of dreams. Yes. Uh, Would that's you like why to I... share them with us? Sure, sure. Um, well. First of all, you know, I was born and raised in this place, and mm -hmm. uh, the things that I've seen when I was uh, growing up are pretty much the same things that I'm seeing. Um, and uh, I always thought that it, what what the place has to offer mm. uh, is not really uh, being taken advantage of. For example, we're um, inscripted in the UNESCO as World Heritage Sites. Yeah. We have five World Heritage Sites, four municipalities. We're the only globally important heritage, agricultural heritage site, Gias. But And those uh, four sites are? Um, well, we have four municipalities, like Banawe, Kungduan, yeah. Mayuyao, and Kian. Mm -hmm. That's right. These four. That's right. And, uh, and the entire province has been declared uh, a globally important agricultural heritage site mm -hmm. by uh, the FAO. Mm -hmm. And uh, so therefore, um, in terms of uh, uh, potentials for uh, ecotourism, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the place offers a lot, but uh, somehow that uh, has not been taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. And um, our people, uh, have coped by uh, leaving our place and uh, looking for greener pastures. So uh, I always dreamed of uh, uh, doing something to keep the people here and take advantage of what we have. Mm -hmm. Not only the rice terraces per se, but the culture that has been spawned by uh, by uh, the rice terraces. Mm -hmm. So you're saying then that Ifugao province isn't just all about the rice terraces? No, in fact, uh, the rice terraces is only actually the, uh, should we say, uh, the site of what I call, or what the UNESCO calls, the uh, only living cultural heritage because the rice terraces uh, has spawned a culture, a very rich culture. How do you propose to capitalize on all the 
beautiful assets of uh, Ifugao province. Okay. In terms of, uh, of tourism, um, the, the sites, the scenery of the rice terraces uh, by themselves seem to be enough attraction for tourists to come. Um, and the culture that uh, supports it also is something that uh, could be a major reason to come and visit. Mm -hmm. So all we really need here in Ifugao is to offer or to uh, to install or is, uh, construct or establish facilities right. that would make the uh, visit and the stay of tourists as comfortable and as safe as possible. I know that you were telling us a story that you want to maintain the sanctity of the natural essence of uh, Ifugao province. You were saying about the road project. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you um, can share that with us. You see, um, the difficulty of the uh, uh, destinations or the size that we, that Ifugao has to offer is in its inaccessibility. Right. So you go through uh, mountains, you have to climb, you have to trek, climb up the mountains mm -hmm. and uh, forge streams and cross rivers. Just and, like and, the song. <laughs> and, and that's tough. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that can be a very big disincentive to tourists mm -hmm. because uh, tourists have very little time and they mm -hmm. would like to be in the site as soon as possible and as comfortable and convenient as possible. So we started uh, building roads to mm -hmm. these places, but the problem with uh, building roads is also the danger of actually destroying mm -hmm. uh, the very site that uh, you would like to offer yeah. to the tourists. So, therefore... Um, Compromise. <laughs> yes, we um, have a particularly beautiful site called Patad. It's an amphitheater type uh, uh, cluster of rice terraces. Uh, one whole side of the mountain uh, that uh, uh, goes all the way down to the river from mm. the top of the mountain has been carved uh, uh, into uh, rice terraces. Uh, but, but before it took us three hours to hike. Now the road had been opened at two-lane road, uh, almost a highway, uh, and it's almost reaching the village. But when I became governor, I uh, talked to the uh, tourism regional director and uh, also the mayor of uh, Banawe, and uh, we convinced the regional director not to bring the paved roads to the village itself, so but it stopped right before it, maybe a kilometer before, because we were worried of the absorptive capacity of the village. That's right. The grandest tribal celebration of Women's Month begins now and here in Ifugao province, and we are going to celebrate with them. Now the presentations begin. Just recently, the province of Ifugao culminated the observance of Women's Month by conducting the provincial 20th Annual Women's Assembly in Lamut Town. About 800 participants joined in the event with the local theme, Bugan, Desisyon Mo Ay Mahalaga, Sa Kinabukasan ng Bawat Isa, Ikaw Na. The two-day event was aimed to promote women empowerment and was funded and facilitated by the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office and organized together with the Women's Federation and Dr. Eileen Habawel, the governor's wife. I saw you dancing very intently and more passionately than the other men. <laughs> Well, I had to learn. Is there, is there a, a meaning or a, a style to it? You mimic, I heard from one of the elders that uh, you, when you dance the Ifugao dance, you are uh, 
copying the movements of uh, a bird, no? mm. per perhaps an eagle or a hawk or a falcon. No? So uh, that's the, what you try to imbibe in order to perform the dance uh, properly. Uh -huh. Because I make, my, I make it a point that whenever I do uh, if you go dance, especially in the public, you have to do it correctly. As of today, I am an Ifugao woman. It's official. Thanks to Governor Dennis Habawel. Hi, Gov. Hi. I, I enjoyed your event today. I was so impressed with the entire federation of uh, women's uh, associations here. That's right. Of all the municipalities. Yes. How were you able to get all of them together? Well, um, the women's organizations have been uh, organized uh, for quite some time. But uh, since last year, um, they uh, really planned for this uh, provincial gathering today. And um, they even uh, had a trip to uh, Manila mm -hmm. to plan it. And so uh, there, there it is. I mean, it's a, it was a product of really uh, uh, good preparation. What impressed me most about the women was that they were just only too willing to participate. They were disciplined. They were a very good audience. Mm -hmm. They listened. And uh, you, you could feel as a speaker that they were very much a part of your talk. Yes. Well, that's one thing about our communities. Uh, we have still very, very strong community spirit. Yeah. Um, as you could see, there is not much alternative um, in terms of activities. So people uh, tend to get focused on uh, community activities. Then there's the rare but delicious and nutritious Tinawan rice. It's called Tinawan because it means once a year or yearly. It's a special rice that only is harvested once a year. Ifugao culture revolves around rice, which is considered a prestigious crop. Let's meet Jimmy from the Association of Rice Farmers here in Ifugao to teach us about the different varieties of rice and how valuable they are. The Tinawan rice is how old? Uh, it, this Tinawan rice was grown a uh, long, long time ago, 2,000 years. And we have many varieties of Tinawan mm -hmm. in uh, other many? municipalities. Uh, we identified 17 uh, varieties, mm -hmm. but in Banawi, we have only the prominent varieties in Banawi, the Tinawan White and Tinawan Fancy. And the Fancy is, uh, it's not the red, no? Different. Uh, it's more or less red, it's brown. Oh, but I the saw it. Tinawan White is uh, pure, it's white, mm -hmm. but they are aromatic, both of them are aromatic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all very popular export products. Since in 2005, when a former Peace Corps came, uh, the name is uh, Mary Hensley, with uh, Mom Vicky Garcia, they came in uh, 2005 in the municipality of Kiangan, and then uh, we attended the uh, orientation, and they explained the exporting of this mm -hmm. uh, loom rice mm -hmm. and we are attracted because uh, we observe that the heirloom varieties are extinct mm -hmm. nawawala na mm -hmm. so we are happy with this uh, project so we try to invite them here in Banawi and we talk with them that uh, we will help you in the promotion of this uh, heirloom rice, the native rice. And the so, farmers are happy too because the price is better, right? The buying yes, price. Yes, because they offer the more or less double price, a premium price. Mm -hmm. So when we started this project in 2005, 2006, we scouted some of the available uh, varieties planted yeah. with 
we planted with farmers mm -hmm. and then we get all the samples, the 17 samples and uh, for testing and abroad and out of 17 there are seven varieties prominent that are that are good that they want that these varieties will be exported. That's so right, we have the Tinawon rice, yes. Tinawon uh, white, and Tinawon fancy, and even the glutinous. Mm -hmm. For centuries, the Ifugaos have long depended on wet rice farming and have developed a profound rice farming tradition. There is even an elaborate and complex array of rice cultural feasts linked with taboos and agricultural rites from rice cultivation to rice consumption, revolving around their rice god, the bulul. In the rice terraces, we cultivate only one um, uh, kind of rice, which is called the tinawan. Yes. It's cultivated once a year, mm -hmm. and uh, it goes through uh, 13 stages. And each stage in the preparation, cultivation, harvesting, and uh, resuscitation of the soil um, would mean a particular rite or a so, particular ceremony in right. our culture. So every single step in the, in the making of this rice, from the planting to the harvesting to the finished product, yes, yes, it has a ritual revolving around it. That's very true. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, we pride uh, ourselves in uh, having uh, two epics. We mm -hmm. have the Hood Hood and the Alim. I've always been saying that even India, with almost two billion people, have the Mahabharata. Yeah. But we have uh, two epics. Uh, we have the Hood Hood and the Alim, which are stories that revolve around this culture of uh, uh, planting and uh, harvesting rice, the mm -hmm. Tinoa. Of course, there is more than just Banawe than the rice terraces. There's so many things to do here. We visited a terraced fish pond, would you believe? using fresh mountain stream water. And then there's wood carving. We interview a wood carver. And there's weaving. Let's talk to the ladies who weave these beautiful fabrics. And of course the food. Gourmet food at its best. The star of the show is duck. Ifugao culture value kinship, value ties, religious and cultural beliefs, family as one. They're unique among all ethnic groups in the province, and they still practice the same skills as in the past, wood carving and weaving crafts. And the most beautiful of artistic expressions can be seen from the sculpture because it isn't just wood carving, it is wooden sculpture. And there is no school for sculpture here in Ifugao province. There is only a tradition that's handed down from generation to generation. For more than 38 years, Manong Benito has been a wood carver, but actually, in our eyes, he's really a sculptor. Now we have a sneak peek into what Mang Moreno can do. And if you're visiting Ifugao province and you're in Banawe, and you have a mishap with your shoes or whatever, or your leather bag, he can fix it. Hindi ba? You can fix anything? Opo. Kaya? Kaya po. <laughs> <laughs> and his laughter is infectious. While men are known for being skilled wood carvers, weaving crafts and basketry are exclusive tasks for women. 
Traditionally, weaving is done for the family's needs, but because of the growing tourism in the province, it is also done for commercial purposes. While Manan Conchita is getting all set up for her weaving, we have come to realize that the Ifoga women not only weave, they actually plant the rice. And that is why <laughs> she's smiling. <laughs> Am I correct, Manang Conchita? Yes. And that's yes. how it is in Ifogao life. Hardworking, independent, courageous, disciplined women. So meet the chef. Chef Tess. Hi. What have you prepared for us? Tell us. So excited to try it. Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, we have a native duck here prepared how the Ifugaos do it. Mm -hmm. We call it in lagim. In lagim. In lagim, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, in the morning, we went with, uh, to the market with Dr. Kalugdan, and I found some um, um, local fish that grows in the river. Uh -huh. um, come to mama. <laughs> come to mama. <laughs> so we prepared it uh, in two kinds. One is uh, cooked in vinegar and the other one's uh, crispy oh. fried. Oh. And then okay. we have a uh, yeah. pako salad. Yes. And this grows wildly. Yeah, in the forest. We can, uh, we can say it's organic. Yes. It grows wildly in the mm -hmm. forest. And this is habuggan, our habuggan. local spinach. Mm -hmm. And it grows really wildly also in the farm, yes. in, the, in the payo. And this is pinak bed. Yeah, pinak bed, the usual. Mm -hmm. Now the inards, yung laman loob ng pato, mm -hmm. We made it into dinuguan. Here it is. Yeah, this right is there. really authentic. Yeah, unique. Mm -hmm. Rare. It's a dinuguan I, I, pato. I, when you look at Ifugao Province ten years from now, let's say, how would you like to see it? What is your vision for Ifugao Province well, ten uh, years from now? I would like to see uh, Ifugao ten years from now as uh, having uh, been successful in setting up. Uh, um, sufficient facilities uh, to make tourists want to come yeah. and stay and, stay. and uh, share their wealth to my people <laughs> because that's the only way that uh, to my mind we can actually uh, improve this, uh, the um, economic standing of our mm -hmm. people. Ten years from now I would like to see that uh, um, people in Manila there are about 20 million people in Manila <laughs> right. with extra money mm -hmm. looking for Adventure. a place to go. Yes. And Ifuga is just 365 kilometers away. Right. Would you like to invite our televiewers to come yes. visit you? Every June of the year is a uh, foundation. Uh, we celebrate Foundation Day. It's a, a one week uh, celebration. And, and in all the days of the celebration, we celebrate culture. So everything from ethnic sports to ethnic arts to ethnic food and uh, other presentations and festivals will be presented during the time. Uh, hopefully, uh, for those of you who are looking for a place to go, uh, I am inviting you to uh, uh, come and visit and enjoy Ifuga. So get ready, Mr. Governor. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we shall. And we shall be very happy to have you uh, during the time. The heart and soul of an Ifugao woman, it's all about love and dedication and commitment. And thanks to Governor Dennis Habawal and his lovely wife, Dr. Eileen, we were able to experience this firsthand. I'm Corey Quirino, and this has been Thumbs Up.